and welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have the infamous Eric. I was actually just startled from that intro because I, after we said let's go, I completely forgot we were going. Oh, are we going? Are we live? Yeah, we're, what? We're, 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 Shit. I, I'm in a funk, man. I like my brain is not all here. And yeah, this will be a doozy. So, uh, so how many Wait. games of Dota you get in? That's probably why. Oh, Jesus. His brain is melting. Yep. Dota melts in real brain. time. Oh, uh, we also have the spectacular Beatmaster Tom. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, yeah, I like Beat that. Saber Master. Rather. You'll get one of those. <laughs> you got to pay for more. Yes, of course. On Tom's fans only. Yep. Tom's fans. Him beat bopping while he actually uh, plays Beat Saber. Yep. <laughs> he makes different uh, percussion notes or notes notes Noits. every time he hits a square. <laughs> we should make a beat map of him just going. Yes. I'm into it. Let's go. I agree. Also, I forgot to start his queuing. I'm yeah, horrible. Let's queue. We're queuing. So, uh, yeah. What y'all? How y'all been? Uh, been good. We got a new. Let got me guess. Note. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I'm reading the future here. Tom, Tom was busy. Tom was busy. <laughs> <laughs> Says it all right there. Yes. Yep. Dang. That sucks. You hate to see it. I don't uh, was, think I was mentioned. There... I don't think I mentioned this on the last podcast. I leveled up at work. Oh, no! Nice. Oh, yeah, the promotion. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's one of the reasons I've been so busy. It's been one of those. Well, now that you got it, you you want to do all this other stuff? I'm like, no, um, no, but fine. <laughs> I guess that's you're large... paying me. Yeah, that's largely why I've been. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's 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 shit I'm not touching with that. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, in, in all honesty, I'm having I'm having a lot of fun. It's just busy. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're enjoying, man. Yeah. Do you? Congrats no. on the promotion. That's awesome, though. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Ah. I'm I'm having a good old time with it. <laughs> nice. So, I got I got some yeah. new goodies this week. Oh. I'll, I was I was gonna ask, uh, how's that <laughs> Rocket League looking, Adam? It looks. Very crisp, and the, the colors are rich and vibrant. Um, I got a couple of new monitors this week. I made the switch to 1440p from 1080p, and it has been so nice. I mean, it's it's definitely noticeable in-game. Um, everything is obviously more crisp and clear. It's easier to see things at a distance and like, shooters and stuff. Um, but really... Just having that extra screen real estate for just general usage and like productivity and making music stuff and even just Discord being able to see a lot more text on the screen at the same time like it's really really nice. Um, I so still what have you're my. Saying is you have room for activities. I have so much room for activities. <laughs> so what uh, I'm hearing so... is your next upgrade is to go ultra wide. No, I don't really have any desire for that, honestly. I'll go 4K before I go ultra wide. I think. I would personally go ultra wide, but it's also what I'm used to from my my work desk at work. Like oh, okay, that my makes actual sense. office. Yeah. Um, but no, I've got my old monitor now to my left, so I'm rocking I'm rocking three, which is excessive, but also kind of nice, especially for the podcast right now because I have all the things I need to see in one place. Um, but yeah, like looking over at the 1080p monitor in comparison. Like all the text, it's big and ugly, and <laughs> you mean it's it's, it's functional bold it's and fine. readable. Um, no, I mean it's it's clearer on the like small text is clearer than this big text on this other monitor on the fourteen forty p monitors. Yeah, like but just, you're trying to read the other side of the room. It's easier on the ten eighty. Yeah. Also, these monitors are, are bigger. They're uh, 27 inch monitors oh nice what we got a 21 on your 1080 no it's a 24 24 all right yeah. oh, sorry. you had a night you had a pretty nice monitor to start with for your 1080 it was decent yeah it was like the the budget 14 or uh the budget 144 hertz like acer 1080p yeah. monitor 
So it wasn't like a high end or even really mid range monitor. It was just like the budget high refresh rate pick. Yeah, it's actually I s- pretty good. I'm still rocking sixty hertz, man. Same. <laughs> oh man, you I mean, I, are... I, it's so I did nice. the same thing with sixty. So there's this whole if you don't know how nice it is, you don't realize you need it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and. I remember doing a LAN party at Tom's and Adam brought his rig and we were about to do some CSGO and I saw his CSGO and I'm like, what game are you playing? Like, this <laughs> looks so much nicer than mine because, you know, I'm running like 30 frames a second. Actually, with my graphics card, I might have been hitting like 24 from time to time without really Ooh. thinking about it. Yeah. And then Adam's running this crisp, beautiful 60 frames. <laughs> And that's the same exact feeling going from 60 to 144 or 120 or whatever. Like, it's very smooth. And then My, 60, and that's why I don't 60 want to now see. looks like 30. And 1080p now looks like 720p. And <laughs> My issue is that without cycle like, severely deconstructing and reconstructing my current gaming setup, I wouldn't even be able to use a 144 hertz monitor. So Parsec caps out at 60 FPS and... That's oh, why I play I the see. games through. Yeah, that's true. So, if you're streaming, yeah, games, I'd have it to. Make sense. Exactly, I'd have to like move the PC and then physically connect a bunch of cables and then figure out like a KVM situation, which they all suck. So, ugh. I mean, so uh, it or, only get or so far could only go 1080p, 60 frames. You could. I think it can do a higher resolution. I want to say it can go up to 4K, depending on the uh, the client. Oh, okay. But 60 FPS is kind of a like a network limitation right now with right. the protocol. True. I so said there's I always mean, another option. Just do a standard rig. Yeah. What? What? That is an option. Yeah. But also, but I mean, though, honestly, even just outside of games, having 144 hertz, you can actually tell just like moving windows around in Windows and stuff. Like. Oh yeah. You can. I, I can you can t- tell. Yeah. And it's nicer even that even then yeah i'm, I'm with her i don't i don't need to see it i need <laughs> to, to have that like old elder god's knowledge just weighing on my soul as i look upon my 60 frames per second mm-hmm. exactly sure. i'd rather be ignorant with how bad i have it i yeah. don't need the wonder lust <laughs> exactly I will say though, um, going that with that jump in resolution, I was kind of worried about my frame rate in games, like because I, I usually prioritize visual quality a little bit more than like nice frame rate, so I was worried mm. that I would have to start stepping graphics down in certain games and things, and then especially with Tarkov, how poorly that game is optimized, I was worried that that would just be too big of a jump and I would be getting really awful frames in Tarkov. But it actually didn't make a huge difference. I was surprised. Oh, nice. nice. Also, I do want to call something out real quick. Uh, this, I know I'm jumping again to a little bit of games topic. But uh, Rob, uh, Red Rebel Rob, is on the test server for Tarkov. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that they've actually made substantial optimizations. Like, actual noticeable improvements. Oh, so, that's great. I don't know. We might end up having a game that runs halfway okay. Hmm. But, sorry. Continue, Adam. Oh, no, I was just saying, everything seems to run, run pretty well so far. So that's that's really awesome. I'm happy. <clears throat> yeah. At some point, I want to evaluate if it's time to build a new. I just don't know yet. I mean, your rig but... is still pretty beefy, isn't it? Even so? <sighs> yes, no. It starting to, I mean, have you noticed it? I'm starting to notice it on certain things, but I... <laughs> Okay, Battlefield 4. That game loads and runs like complete ass. I actually have to start it multiple times for it to actually work. Now, I know that that has to do something with my computer, but not because of quality of my computer. Because that game Yeah, is, that's something... Like, that's more of a bug my, situation. My that. hardware was made after that game came out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and I didn't buy cheap hardware. Yeah, exactly. Like... But like I am running absolute butter for you. I'm running a 1080 and I'm running uh 6700 or six yeah 6700. So I mean I've I've got okay stuff. It's not great. 
at this point it's probably maybe a little better than average rig but probably mm. not much more than better than average so with the the amd cards with their prices that they're coming in at like i'm i'm tempted that really? this summer when the cards hopefully eventually become available fingers crossed yeah a, a rig might happen I mean, the 3,000 series NVIDIA cards price points really aren't bad either, but it's... You know, um, they're getting you can't worse. get one. I mean, the so, MSRP prices. Oh, uh, no, no. Those are getting worse, too. Oh, are they? Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So there was there was a... Um, basically, like a, a tariff um, for graphics chipsets and other electronics in that kind of category mm -hmm. um, that was suspended for a while. And then that was never voted back into place. So now uh, graphics cards are like, I want to say 50 to 100 bucks more expensive thanks to those tariffs. Um, so there's there's a little bit of like government style fuckery going on with graphics card pricing, uh, which isn't making even, the situation any better. Even 100 bucks cheaper more than what they were is still coming it's in still, at least an amount lower than the 2000 series. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's still really, really good. It's just not as really, really good. It's just kind of really good. But the AMD specs to price is just mind-boggling compared to the NVIDIA's. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, the 3090, like, projected specs and all that kind of shit compares to the same price point as a 3080 and NVIDIA. Like, it's it's really weird. I don't know how to properly put it, but it's a lot cheaper for yeah. the um, AMD this time and around. Aren't they doing their own ray tracing tech or trying to? I yes. think so. I wonder that's how that's going to work with that... games, like programming games and stuff. Like, Are, they, are games going to have to so pick, typically, <laughs> um, pick a technology? How, how it usually starts out is that, yes, uh, you know, game, game designers will have to say, oh, we're optimizing for this thing and pick a winner. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually those things are coalesced into a, a standard. So DirectX mm -hmm. kind of used to be that thing um, until they got like really slow and kind of weird and cross-platform support over the years. So now it's Vulcan. So eventually you'll see like the ray tracing tech come to just a Vulcan and then it becomes a like flat standard for anyone else to build against. So yeah, but, it's, yeah. it'll take a little bit, but it'll get there. And I still don't, like, I knew for the 2080s or the 20 series, like, ray tracing is gimmicky. It's cool as shit, but it's never going to be a standard that generation. I still don't know what the 3080 is going to be. Like, I mean, there's a chance that it, ray tracing could be a standard by the end of the 3080 life cycle. Like, yeah. I'm not going to put money against it, but I still don't know. Well, so I don't like... know if getting the really good ray tracing is worth it for me at this point. It's it's one of those things where it will start out being super gimmicky and then it'll just be part of your expected graphical feature set when you launch a game, right? Like uh, yeah. like take a look at uh, water physics, right? Or uh, reflection mapping or bump mapping or normal mm -hmm. maps. Uh, or right? like, like the hair that... physics thing that the, I think was yeah. it The Witcher that had that. And then like everything used, like everything in these games used excuses like oh well we we need uh to make Geralt's hair like this because of you know gameplay and story reasons not because <laughs> we really 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 want to use nvidia hair works yeah uh we promise it's not at all because we just think it's neat um yeah it's just because they think it's neat but then mm -hmm. after after game developers get past the oh wow we should put this into everything factor then you start to see it being used like more naturally it's like any other art style right you find a really really cool technique or a really cool tool and then you're obsessed with putting it in everything and you're overdoing all of it when really yeah. you should just be adding subtle bits here and there well, i i but, like in ray tracing more to something like 1080 to 4k where yeah it's it's more of a render style so i would say that like with 4K, when it first came out, like the TVs were sixteen thousand dollars to run 4K, and like at that point, I'm like, dude, 4K is not going to be any kind of standard for another four or five years. I'm not fucking worried. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of how I view ray tracing right now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, I don't want to say it's gimmicky. 
I mean, because it is, like you said, more of a like a different way of doing something. Yeah, it's a better it's, way. It's, like for yeah. quality, it's amazing. Yeah, it looks yeah. really good. And I think it's used well, pretty effectively now. Even in terms of game engine efficiency. So in Silent Hill 2, yeah, I'm, I'm going deep. In Silent Hill 2, um, to do reflections in mirrors, what they had to do is there were literally two scenes and the character used the controls, like when you were controlling your character, mm -hmm. the opposite effect would be applied to the second character that you were actually controlling, but you didn't know that. There was no glass. It was literally a window into a mirrored version of the same room you were looking at. Um, so now with, uh, with RTX and ray tracing, you don't have to do stupid gimmicky shit like that to make reflections work. Instead, you say, this is a mirror. And then everything naturally works. Mm -hmm. So in 2012 was my last year of college. I was taking a shit ton of graphical programming classes. And part of it is we had to render scenes with ray tracing. And at that point, it was pretty much explained like, listen, ray tracing is used traditionally for just still frame pictures yeah. or really big companies like Pixar who have really massive computers that spend yeah. hours to render 30 seconds. Yeah. Like that was how heavy ray tracing was, but that was the insane quality you got from it. Correct. Yeah. And now we can just bolt it onto Quake 2 in a weekend. Yeah, or Minecraft. And have it run on most <laughs> consumer hardware. Like it being put onto Minecraft was the most frivolous, stupid bullshit <laughs> ever. But how much better it looked because of it states how that's, big yeah, of a deal. Ray that's a trade. really that's really good advertising for the tech. Or marketing, or whatever. It would almost be like, oh, we ray traced Mario Brothers. Like, you fucking ass. That's a dumb Why? idea, but look how much better it looks. Obviously, yeah, the technology exactly. is amazing. We should take this seriously. And then they made control, wow. and it's like, oh, okay. I see. I see. You. Yeah, I, I see what you're putting <laughs> down. But yeah, I that, do like that's the Minecraft it's... example because when you enable RTX, it, it actually changes the way you build things in Minecraft. Like, um, if you want to make a mirror, you now just do like a black or silver backstop and then some glass and everything just fucking works how it should. Like it's honestly kind of ridiculous and stupid that it's that easy mm -hmm. from the, from the user side. I'm not going to say the tech is easy to implement or program. Uh, like the, the fact like of understanding what ray tracing is, is literally taking a straight line from the viewport and draw and literally drawing everything out from the viewport for all those different angles. Ooh. It's insane yeah. that that could be done in real time now. Absolutely yeah. insane. You're literally modeling the movement of photons and how they bounce yes. around. Like <laughs> Exactly. I mean, that's absolutely what you're, you're doing. You're just it's, modeling how light works. Exactly. It's the it's same ridiculous. as like modeling gravity for a physics engine. But yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm debating I'm building later this year, but we'll see. Until that, because Dota doesn't need it, and no, it doesn't. Dota doesn't need it. I'm okay. <laughs> so uh, the only thing in my build, because I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I'm rocking a base uh, 2080. Uh, it's it's a nice machine, uh, and I I will get a graphics card eventually when when they are available and scalpers aren't making our lives just fucking miserable, but. My main issue right now is my M2 drive. There is something wrong with it. It is criminally slow. Mm. I got that literally to put VR games on for fast loading, and it takes forever to update them. There's something weird with it. So now I've got to go replace that SSD with something else. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm not not super thrilled with it, but is again, it it's, it's a hard drive. Is like, it also your system drive? Or is it? No. Okay, the good. Yeah, that I've would be a much M2. more of a pain to replace than... Yeah. I've got one M2 for the system drive. I've got one M2 for fast games. And then I've got uh, ye old spinning rust disc for everything else. Okay. What's up, Relentless? New background for Irk. Um... I was just responding to that. I'm actually the same. It's just my li literally one of the lights behind me went out and I've been too lazy to fix it. <laughs> So we'll say it's for ambiance, but it's really yeah. I'm lazy as shit. That's fair. So it's for ambiance. Yeah, yeah, it's ambiance. Absolutely. It's, it really sets the mood for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's what I'm all about, man. Anything to help us out. 
<laughs> and absolutely not because I just don't want to go to the store and buy a light bulb. Anyway, um, so you guys have want to get into some games, or no, is there good. anything else first? Oh no, all right, just call it. Yeah. All right. All right. What? GGS. Oh yeah. GGS. See everybody. Bye. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> I, I I want to start off with this. Yes. So I put a lot more time into Loop Heroes. Yeah. Um, I so saw a description. I saw a description of this game that put it in better words than I did. And it's not a perfect explanation, but effectively you're a dungeon master and your hero's just running around in circles and you're just equipping him with shit. But you are the dungeon master setting up the entire world that he is going to run through. Okay. Which is kind of a good way to call it. But yeah, I really enjoy the game. Um, the bosses are super difficult to the point where... Um, the second one feels borderline cheap. I haven't got through her yet. I mean, she's not cheap, but it's just like, it's really fucking difficult. Ooh. Um, So like that mechanism of the game is just so fun of play it however you want difficulty wise, but until you reach a certain point of difficulty, we're not going to spawn the boss for you. Oh, Oh, huh. Because right. you have to, every card has like a point value to it. And you have to play so many points before the boss spawns. And as you play cards, those cards are what are going to permanently spawn monsters. Like you'll spawn, you'll play a grove card, which will put a grove on the map. And every day that grove will spawn a rat wolf. Or you'll put a vampire mansion. And what a vampire mansion does is anytime you fight a combat around a vampire mansion, you're going to have to fight a vampire with that combat. Okay. So there's all that kind of stuff that you're doing, and that's how you bump up the points so you spawn the boss. So it's a balance of you don't want to make it too difficult for yourself that you just die from your shit, mm -hmm. but you don't put enough points down, you won't spawn the boss. So you're like, how far can I push this? How and far if can you I push wait, this? and if you wait and keep putting like low card, low card, low card, every loop you do ratchets up the difficulty of everyone. Oh, okay. Granted, you get so, better loot every loop, but the mm -hmm. difficulty of all the monsters goes higher, too. So you're forced to push it as far as you can. Otherwise, it'll just become unmanageable. Yeah, it's a balance. Like, I've had stupid high loop counts where I just quit because I wanted to quit. But that said, I wasn't going to beat the boss those runs either. Because, like, the boss is just hard. You, you kind of have a feeling. When you get to spawning the boss, they give you an option of, do you want to retreat with all your resources or do you want to gamble and fight the boss? Because if you die and you don't retreat at the start or end of a loop, you lose 70% of the resources you collected. Ooh. So, so they you like gotta it, really believe. Every time you can set up it to where it pauses at the end of a loop and then you decide, do I retreat and keep it all or do I keep going? And I, I really like that mechanic because, man, I've been punished sometimes where I'm like, yeah, man, I'm kicking ass, kicking ass. And then all of a sudden, shit. Everything hit on the timing just wrong, and everything spawned. And this <laughs> run is done. So it's it's a lot of fun. It's not for those who need a lot of action. Like, it's a really good game for um, just putting something on the other monitor, man. Yeah. Like, Ooh. if you're watching a show, like, or like, I like to chill out to Rick and Morty. So I might put Rick and Morty on while I'm playing some Loop Heroes. It's, it's just a great vibe. I like games like that sometimes. Ooh. Sometimes I don't want to focus on something and, and really, you know, try hard. Sometimes it's nice to just like put something on kind of in the background where you can, you know, mildly focus enough that you're not bored, but you can still chill out and relax. Yeah. yeah. And there's a hero called the rogue where other people, as you kill things, you get the items immediately. With the rogue, you get a trophy. And at the end of the loop, you turn in all those trophies to get items. So with her, it's even better because if you turn on pause at the end of every loop, you don't have to pay attention through the loop. As long as you live, it pauses, and then you see all the new gear for that loop, and you can decide what you want to use if you're going to use any of it. So it's a really almost idolish game at a certain to a certain degree. Ooh. Nice. How much time have yeah, you put in it so far? I've probably put seven hours, eight hours in a week, something like that. So it's that's, that's pretty decent for a, for a game like that, I think. Yeah, and there's it. I call it rogue light because there's absolutely uh, mechanisms outside of the runs that impact inside the runs. Oh yeah. So yeah, 
Yeah, it's it's like you have this town you build, and as you build different building types, it gives you different benefits and stuff. So yeah, it's it's really good. Solid, solid game. Very rogue legacy esque when it comes to that aspect of it. Which, I'm, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to trying it. I bought it last night, but I did not get a chance to play it. A lot of people have bought it. I was going to say, um, it seems like it's sort news. of catching catching on. Ooh. I've seen some like streamers play it that normally stick to like one or two games. It's hit the f- half a mil mark already on sales, and it's only been out a week. Oh, yeah. Cool. For, for this kind of game, like if you look at it, like yeah. it's not a pretty game, man. <laughs> <laughs> this game is ugly. <laughs> it is retro in actual retro sense. So yeah. the fact it sold a half million is to speak to the quality of the game for sure. But yeah, I highly recommend it for anyone who likes um, kind of strategy, idolish game, uh, roguish. Yeah, it's, it's all around pretty solid. Anyway, that's all I, w- I wanted to get that out there right away just because yeah. I wanted to update because I kind of lightly hit on it last week. But I hadn't had enough time to really talk to it much. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, Loop Hero is cool. Che- check it out. Check it out. Che- che- check it out. Um, We all got into some VR last week. We did. We did. Yeah. After the podcast, we played some Phasmophobia in VR. That was the first time I got to experience that game in VR. Um, What'd you think? It, it was cool. Like, being able to kind of maneuver the placement of cameras and stuff better um, and being able to point your flashlight independent of where you're actually looking and stuff. Like it just, it felt cool to be more immersed in that and have more control. You can carry more things. Um, Yeah. So I think that would be a better way to play it. Um, But the point you made is if you're prone to motion sickness, it's not the best VR game because at least at least on on my rig when I was playing the game runs at a fine frame rate like it doesn't it's not that it runs bad but for some reason like the free movement when I'm walking around it looks like it's running at like 30 frames per second sometimes less yep. like the movement is isn't fluid it's it's almost like little constant little steps yeah um so I it didn't get to me too much or anything but i mean i could definitely see that that would be an absolute no-go for some people yeah it got chewy and i both last session mm-hmm. yeah like i after one fucking run i'm like nope i'm putting it down i am <laughs> jumping on the regular screen and i will continue to play with you guys that way yeah. which i enjoy that you can do that Ooh. oh yeah yeah i don't think i could play it all day or anything for sure but i was okay like the one or two we did But yeah, I, yeah I, I, I I would like to see that kind of be fixed because I think the game really does work much better in VR. Just that yeah. type that type of experience, I think, is it really benefits from the extra immersion that VR gives you, and then the controls are you know much more intuitive. Yes, though I will say working the doors is actually a little harder in VR. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But that that that's an that's a actually stupidly difficult situation to handle in vr more so than you would think <laughs> I, as tom's okay. reference about the video before i was gonna say li- literally literally i watched a guy from valve software give a one hour presentation to digipen students about doors in vr it is it is a deep and complex field how the fuck to door <laughs> that's that's literally that's not an exaggeration like it's yeah, literally yeah, one yeah. of the hardest ux problems mm-hmm. you could ever experience uh in video games how do you make door how, how do door how do door make i mean i think i mean definitely doors especially but i mean i think a general consensus consensus is most people who aren't into game dev have no idea how difficult and complex it is to do really simple things. Yeah. Like it's, it's easy to be like, I don't know why they can't just put a door and make the doors work. The doors suck, but it's like, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. Um, 
and even in the harder part is like communicating that to your players on how mm -hmm. you want them to interact with something because like i can i can build a game that i myself am going to go through without any problem whatsoever because i know how to work with it it's that communication of you know developer to intent within game design to the player as the consumer and it, it gets weird like you're playing a weird game of telephone all the time with your players to try to get them to understand a concept mm -hmm. and sometimes it works and sometimes it really doesn't but yeah all that to say doors and phasmophobia vr are a little rough that said it's not a vr first game so yeah expected um we also got in some rec room we actually did a decent amount of rec room I we love did. Rec I was room. surprised at the variety in the variety of experiences in the game. And we like only I... played the official stuff. We didn't even yeah. get into the, the custom things. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was like cool. It was, the... uh, it was like a, I don't know, it was just like a way to hang out with friends. You know, we, we did the the room with the, the bowling alley and the pool table. Like, we're all just chilling, bowling, or playing pool. You know, from opposite sides of the country. Of pool. And yeah, from opposite sides of the country, and it just you know, obviously it's not nearly as real as just hanging out. But I mean, it's it's a step above like playing just a normal game together. It did feel mm. more real and more immersive than that. It felt good. It did, yeah. It's like especially, hanging out with friends. especially in these interesting times of like we can't all just go to a random sports bar and drink <laughs> a couple of beers and play pool. Yeah, it, like. I don't want to say that Rec Room felt normal. Like it, it's not, it's not that. It's still a good, video right? game. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like on the same level, but given the alternative of not doing it. Yeah. I'll take yeah. this every day. It does. It feels well, like more of a connection than it does yeah. with a game like, you know, playing Rocket League together or playing a shooter together. Like, yeah, you can see, yeah. you know, if me and Eric play Battlefield, I can see his guy with his name over it running around the battlefield, but it doesn't feel like Eric. But for some reason, yeah. when we're all playing pool in this stupid little room and, with our like, like avatar characters, it feels more like us, I guess. Yeah. Well, like, and like you, you said it around. Time. And, and a lot of it is the like the gestures and body language, like actually yeah. translates pretty well in, in VR. Well, when you said it, like at one point I fucked up a shot and you said like, okay, your body language, I know exactly what you yeah. just did. <laughs> yeah. I saw your, your hands drop. I saw you deflate. <laughs> 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 but no and that was also another cool thing about like with the pool it's not like an intense game like you could tell someone would take a shot step over and then sit down in real life and you would just yeah. see them like crouch in the game <laughs> it was kind of fun yeah but um rec room i want to call out they're doing something interesting where they're actually sharing some profits with content creators inside the game Oh, really? Which is kind of interesting. Like, you can do um, use, like, in-game currencies to buy things from um, content creators. In, like, uh, the room we were chilling in, like, there was different keys that allowed you to do certain things inside of that custom room that he made. And it's oh. really cool because, like, that room we found, that was a fucking chill-ass place. Oh, my God. It was great. It had, like, lo-fi music playing at a bunch of chill-out rooms. You could walk around in the rain outside, like... It was just a really chill kind of vibe out apartment. And then there was, there's one thing that I wish we could get it working, but we never could. There was a video player, like where you can just put on like paste YouTube links and have it show <laughs> up, but we weren't able to get that working. That would be fun. That would bring me back to hanging out at Tom's house and everybody just like adding <laughs> YouTube links to the queue for the to, to oh. cast to the TV. What was that thing called? Damn it! Um, the, the really, the yeah, the really expensive oh. ass um the not... YouTube player. <laughs> yeah, it was it was expensive Chromecast. Yeah. So yeah. if uh, for those of you who don't know, Google experimented with Chromecast technology before it was called the Chromecast. It was called the Nexus Q, and it was extremely overproduced and over engineered for what it was. Uh, and it was the world's most expensive YouTube player. Now. It was expensive, like, in hardware design. I got it for free because I went to a conference. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it was it was fun. Though it did I have one cool thing. feature that every phone in that era, it's the, it's the official name of gimmick. 
Uh, yeah. Every phone in that era said they could do it. The NFC transmissions yeah. between your phones. So you would just put your phone on top of the queue and it would play your video for you. It was that so was the cool. only it was the only application to that that I felt wasn't gimmicky as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I've seen some things in like cars where somebody had like an NFC tag in their car and then when they put their phone on it, it went to car mode and started up Google Maps and Spotify and shit. But I mean I, I plug my phone into my car and it does that now automatically. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> technology. Yeah. I either do Bluetooth or, um, aux cable. So fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still on the aux cable. I don't have Bluetooth in my car, unfortunately. I love the aux cable. The aux cable is my favorite thing in the world because you know what? <laughs> there's no software. There's no negotiation. There's no yeah. compatibility bullshit. It no. is. You plug it is, the thing in the thing. <laughs> You, you put you, you know, put this end of the spaghetti cable wire <laughs> into that end, and then you put the other end on the other thing, yeah. and that's they're connected. Also, the the person in the car in control of the aux cable that represents power, and I like, yes. <laughs> I yeah. like that the little dynamic of the the keeper of the aux cable. So speaking also, of he who wields the aux cable oh. controls the mood of the car. Speaking so you, of, I'll go for it. Um. I was playing a uh, cyberpunk tabletop and my character is a nomad. So I've got all the cars and I drive around. And it's really cool. So whenever uh, the rest of my party gets into my vehicle, I make them roll D tens and whoever gets the highest one, I hand them the aux cable. And then <laughs> we, I l make them pick on Spotify what they want to listen to. And we all have a listen together party on Spotify while we're doing that portion of the driving mission. Never going to give you up by Rick Astley. That's cool. The thing that, that cool, somebody though. picked was um, Russian polka dubstep. <laughs> the closest I could find Sounds is fantastic. Russian polka yeah. or uh, electronic Russian polka. Uh, so we did listen to that. Very nice. Yeah. Um, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I never actually had a car with an aux cable. Before I moved out here and got the truck, I was using... Um, a CD player only exclusively or yeah, I used to do a tape deck to aux cable extension. Yep. Those things are so awful. They made like the, de just completely degraded the, the audio quality. And then at least the ones I bought would always break every like yep. month or two. Yeah. Dude, there were a reason they were cheap is because they knew yeah. they were going to break. So if they were expensive, people just wouldn't buy them. They're cheap. You just view them as consumables. <laughs> Dude, I saw kind of like those... Valve Index headset cables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw one of those things at a grocery store like last year. I mean, there's. I, I wonder mean, what percentage know... of cars yeah. still run cassette tapes. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, definitely no new cars. But I mean, <laughs> how many people are still rocking old cars? I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's 90s or before. Like, anything yeah. in the 2000s, I don't think would have it anymore. Uh, no, I had a 2005 Ford Escort. Maybe it was 2002. But it had a, it still had a cassette player. Okay. Ah, uh, cassette players. The days. <laughs> but. The days. Digress. Mixtapes. Uh, oh, fuck that, dude. See, everyone was doing mixtapes. What I would do is I would take a whole fucking CD and put it in one of those boombox CD uh, cassette plate mm -hmm. player that my sister had, put yeah. the CD in, hit play, hit record on the tape, and I would just had the CD on the tape bootleg. Uh, I used to, uh, I was when I was a kid, I had a, I would put a cassette tape in, in the thing and I'd turn the radio on. And I remember it was when Chop Suey by System of a Down came out. And I loved that song, and I was obsessed with that song. But there was no such thing as a repeat function on a cassette tape. So I would listen to the radio, and every time that song came on the radio, I would record it onto that cassette tape, one after another, so that I could then play the tape and just play the song on loop. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is awesome. So my, my parents actually had a pretty uh, decent cassette tape-based uh, stereo system. And... Ours did have a repeat function. So what you did, it had um, a button that was labeled A, arrow, B. 
So you'd hit that button. And then when the song was over, you would hit it again. And then what it would do is it would rewind the tape at that point, go back to A, play to point B, and then rewind and hit play again. It was actually kind of oh. legit. Like, <laughs> That's kind of neat. That's yeah. pretty cool tech for a fucking cassette tape. That would <laughs> yeah, be right? easy to implement. Yeah, like that shit is nuts. I loved it. I love that old stereo. I listened to so much goddamn Hootie and the Blowfish on that. You have uh, no idea. <laughs> oh, Hootie. <laughs> Wonderful. How do we get uh, on the topic of cassette players? Uh, um, ox cable. Ox cable. Yeah, but where'd the fuck that come from? Where'd the ox cable know. come from? Bluetooth. Um, oh, the, the, oh, yeah, because Rec Room, you could just watch oh, shit yeah. together. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Man, sometimes it just We've made it all the way back. Conversations. We're back yeah. to video right. games. <laughs> so back to video games. Yeah. What else did we do in VR? Was that all we did in VR? Um, see, I know, I know Chewie and Adam did some Pavlov with me. Yeah. Which was fun. I love Pavlov. It's, it's a good time. I actually played a Pavlov little bit. Great. I played a few matches yesterday or the day before yesterday uh just solo just through the server browser did some gun game it was fun got to a lobby with uh some moderately immature uh <laughs> very mic heavy people but you know otherwise it was a good time yeah I, uh... that, that that's what ruined rec room at the very end was that charades <laughs> room with yeah. a lot of yeah. oh my god that was so fucking that guy sounded annoying. too old to be that immature yeah, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that is actually one of my favorite rooms in Rec Room when it's not filled with people like that. Because yeah. that yeah. charades game is really fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I was playing some uh, some Pavlov last night, and there was a guy who had routed his mic to uh, oh. to an audio player, which is sometimes annoying. But this time, it was just fucking terrifying. So I was on his team and it was it was kind of fun when I was on his team. But when I wasn't, it was horrifying because you'd be walking like I'm the last one alive and I'm like I'm aiming, check my corners. I'm slicing the pie like I'm I'm ready to make this shit happen. And uh, I realize now that I just totally bashed the fuck out of my green screen. That, that's, that's all right. That's fine. Right back there. That's fine. <laughs> uh, anyway. So. um it was terrifying because I was turning a corner and the only thing is gonna be a mighty king. Like he's listening to the Lion King soundtrack over his mic and I'm hearing Simba sing. I'm like, oh God, where is he? I can hear him. I can't see him. And then I get shot in the face. Ah. Simba's gonna kill you. Oh my God. The lion sleeps tonight. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's more like you're putting put to sleep tonight. Oh, it was. That's awful, by the way. What? But yeah, <laughs> it was a fun time. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Pavlov, Pavlov's a lot of fun. I'd like to play some more of that. Maybe we could do a little bit of that aftercast tonight. Uh, down, yeah. Tonight, a little bit of a little uh, bit of VR action. We also got into some Beat Saber today. That was fun. Hell yeah! I am loving Beat Saber. I that is just it's straight okay. up my alley. It's fine. <laughs> Tom's the beat save beat saber master, obviously. Um, I feel like I'm I'm coming along pretty well. I'm starting to get decent. Um, I'm getting to the point now I can play songs that make me breathe heavy and sweat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. So I'm getting just good enough that I can actually get kind of a workout in, um, at least cardio. Uh, so that's been really fun. I I played a bunch throughout the week, and yeah, there was, there was a one day I was like just completely sweating and take my headset off and I go to get a drink of water and cool off a little bit. And then I put the headset on and there was <laughs> the sweat that soaks into the foam padding that rests against your face. Oh. That was now cold because yeah. it wasn't on my face anymore. And it's, uh, it's gross. It's like, uh, so it's, it's like does, putting on uh, a wet pair of underwear or something. Does the quest have, um, user replaceable yes. foam paddings? Yes. Okay. It is absolutely i got it right here like i can literally just just pop it off cool absolutely cool. Nice. no problem so, so um, i talked to magic dave earlier today and he linked me to a website that has a ton of third-party attachments and stuff for all kinds of vr headsets including the quest 2 
So there are like super nice leather, like pleather face pads or like disposable covers you can put on them or just replacement parts. So I will be definitely doing some of that. Actually, one of them was a uh, like straps that attach to the controllers so that you can strap them to your hands like an index controller so you can kind of let oh, go nice. and the controller is still like right there. So that I might get so some of cool. those because that sounds convenient and and you know other other things you can get to improve the experience. But yeah, I, I will definitely be getting some replacement pads because that thing is going to get gross. Yes. And yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're hammering out the beat saber. For sure. Yeah. And that's so primarily I... what I've been playing more than anything. I have, um, cause the, the Vive, uh, Vive, the, uh, index also has the same thing where the faceplate literally just snaps off and snaps mm -hmm. on. Um, and you can buy replacements through valve. Unlike their cables, I'm going to be on that for years. <laughs> um, so I literally have one just dedicated to beat saber. And then I've got the other one dedicated to, I'm not going to sweat and ruin this. Okay. Nice. So I've got, it's like, it's like having a gym bag. I've got my VR gym bag and workout <laughs> equipment. And I've got yeah. the, I'm going to have fun or chill VR equipment. Did, did the OG Vive have a removable face covering? Uh, yes, but it was Velcro and it was kind of annoying to take uh, out. I was going to say like, if any headsets don't have that, that is a huge oversight. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. Oh, I can't imagine. You can't buy a used yeah. VR headset <laughs> without a removable, <laughs> replaceable, uh, Face pads or whatever, but yeah, so yeah. Beat Saber's been I tons haven't of fun. Mine either, Renee. <laughs> uh, um, so I think I'm the freak in VR that I think Beat Saber's fine. It's definitely not my favorite though. Where I think everyone else is like, this is the gem of VR. Yeah, it is it's just jam. it's just super engaging, and the the learning curve is is really nice. I I played a couple of maps today that. And it does the same thing that happens when you're learning to play drums or learning to play a drum part is forcing your limb independence. So it actually feels like your brain is split in two because like you're you're focusing on something on one arm but completely something else on the other arm at the mm -hmm. same time. And it kind of splits your brain in two. And I thought that was really – that's really cool. Once you get the muscle memory down, the um, the best thing – that I have found um, that helps me is you can't think about it. Just, just oh, don't, yeah. don't even yep. try to think about it. If you think it's too slow, if it reaches the point in your brain where it's cognition and you have to start spinning those gears, the mm -hmm. gears aren't fast enough. Yep. It needs to be like direct visual input to like physical output. Mm -hmm. If you think about what you're doing, you've already lost. Sort of. Yeah, for sure. Especially on the faster maps where you just don't have time to yeah. react, and and were, it, it's the same. I mean, it's the same. It's there's so many parallels to learning this game and, and as learning an instrument and learning music and stuff. Obviously, given that it's a rhythm game, that makes sense. But I just I love that <laughs> I'm getting so many feelings that I had learning <laughs> to play like guitar or drums or something. Like it, it's it's its own skill to learn, and I'm having a ton of fun starting to recognize like a lot of the patterns that are common in good maps where they flow mm -hmm. and like certain movements where i don't have to look at every single square i can kind of infer what they're doing and like okay these movements it's the one where it goes you know up on one hand up on the other hand down on the first hand and then down on the la last one and that kind of repeats so all these notes are coming bam, at you bam, and, bam, and if bam, you just look bam, at it at surface bam, value bam. it looks like a crazy amount of notes how could anybody ever keep track of this and play that but you're really you're just kind of sweeping your hands up and down and making yeah. sure they align with the boxes as they come at you so like yeah. like superman right superman is a super fast song and it looks crazy it looks like there's no way a human would be able to recognize that but honestly, it's just a whole lot of those repeating sweet patterns, but super mm -hmm. quickly. Yep. And as long as you can get like the intro of the sweet pattern down, you can just extrapolate the rest of the song. And it's it's honestly not super difficult. It's fast and it's it's difficult, but it's not like mind breaking. Mm -hmm. are, uh, are you starting to recognize the uh, 
kind of bad songs or or bad mapping yeah. techniques where somebody yeah. will be like, oh, do do like fucking chopsticks forever. It's like, no, that yeah. feels awkward and weird. Yeah. And I, just, I don't want to do this anymore. I did download a lot of custom songs, just random songs that didn't really have a whole lot of ratings, but they were songs that I like. A lot of mm. the music I like to listen to isn't like super... Like like any, <laughs> like any of the top 40 pop hits, like those are going to have really, really good maps because a lot of people really like the song and there are a lot of people that can, you know, make those maps. Everybody's going to be rating it. They're going to get curated really well. And then like uh, a lot of heavy metal songs aren't going to get a lot of ratings and stuff because a lot of people mm. don't like that kind of thing. So I, I did play a handful of stuff like that. And some of them are just like, really just stupidly ridiculous in a way that I don't, I mean, if somebody could play it, it probably still wasn't mapped well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've definitely had some amateur maps that were not, that I could tell were just not good. They just weren't fun. Well, yeah. There's, there's some maps that are, it, it seems like the mapper went, oh, expert plus is just crazy difficult because I can't really be expert plus myself. <laughs> so I'm just going to make the most ridiculous thing I could imagine. Yep. And I bet those experts will be able to beat this. Uh, yeah. And it's like, nah, it's like the, ha, I'm going to get one in. The reason Dark Souls works <laughs> is because it's not sadistic. It's difficult, but it doesn't hate you. Um, and then some of these Beat Saber maps, it's like, oh, I'm just going to make the most ridiculous bullshit. It's like, nah, you you can be difficult, but you have to be fair and you have to flow with the song. Mm -hmm. That Absolutely. is the thing that'll fuck me up the most is when like the beat of the, when I'm expecting a different beat than what's coming on the fucking map. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking it, it, sucks. It always trips me up when it's a song that's like got a really strong rhythm and groove and stuff, but the, the map for the beat saber uh, squares are following the vocal pattern mm -hmm. which screws me up um, that kind of bugs me and then um, I did play a couple of maps where the squares just straight up weren't perfectly in time with the music Yeah, and that really bugged me that should bug anyone like there was at least, like get it, at least align it properly to the tempo grid <laughs> like make sure your quarter notes are quarter notes and the the mel like the especially melodies and things that aren't just like a constant pulse, make sure they match up to what you're hearing at least. There was one map, and I I wish I knew which one this was. Um, but it did the thing where it constantly switched what you were tracking with the notes, but it did it in a really nice way. So it had like, hey, this section we're gonna follow the drums, and now we're gonna follow the synth. And now mm -hmm. we're going to follow the vocals. Yeah. But there were breaks in between all those sections. So it wasn't like, a, like we're going to instantly switch. Like, okay, you did the drums. Cool. Here's a couple seconds. Now we're going to get into the vocals. And like, just the way the song was structured, like you knew, okay, here's the focus on the vocals. Now here's the focus on like the synth bridge. And here's the focus on the chorus. And then as the song progressed into the, like the second and third chunks of the song, um, it started layering those things together. Like, okay, here's a part where we've got drums and synth. And because you know both of those patterns, we're going to combine them and have you do them at the same time. Yeah. And then for the third one, here is everything all like that you've already done before individually mashed into one area. And it mm. was really fucking cool. That is awesome. Um, like I, it was, it was a complete fucking like three act story uh -huh. as a beat saber map. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, the maps themselves, I mean, they're compositions in themselves. Yeah. And you can tell a really good map when they use, um, like, those types of techniques. Things like, yeah. uh, you know, a section of the song that is basically the same. The, the map is the same both times through that section in that song. But, like, the second time, they'll change a couple things up intentionally to, to keep you on your toes without getting too Ooh. comfortable in, like, just muscle memory patterns or whatever. Um yeah. And that's and that's a common thing in songwriting too. You want sections to repeat, but if you repeat them exactly the same, people get bored. So you you repeat the section again, but you change some things a little bit. Like maybe mm. you change the rhythm of the drums or maybe that that uh chord progression is played on a piano instead of a guitar or something. Like these are the same techniques used for songwriting that they're using to make these beat maps. 
and you can really tell when somebody puts care into it and and makes something really really good i love the the songs where like the second half of the song which is a repeat of the first half of the song it's the same thing essentially but it's like way more intense like mm -hmm. i play a lot of edm and melodic dubstep stuff and a lot of it will be hey here's this cool hook and then we're going to really hit this like after the beat drops like mm -hmm. we're gonna drop the bass and then hit that same thing but harder and faster like all the one note versions of that stuff will become two or three note versions so instead of like doing the quick hits before you're now doing these wide sweeps and you're like damn i am really fucking getting into this yeah. because you're just like bashing the fuck out of all these boxes <laughs> i like it network okay. i don't care if we've been hammering beat saber this is now the beat saber I know. podcast yeah i know beat saber podcast anyway have you tried google earth vr no i haven't done that yet i forgot actually oh, i kind of just completely forgot that was a thing i was roaming around last night and uh it was it was wonderful um so last night i went to fuck where the fuck was i uh, oh i went to singapore uh and i went to like the touristy trendy area of singapore where they've got like fucking hotel pools on top of buildings on top of roofs nice. that are outside so you can just like chill in the pool and look at a goddamn like city skyline um <laughs> did you so just cool. imply there's a whole other building on top of another building's roof I did. Okay. Deal with Secondary it. building. Yeah. Yeah. It's like those guys that have giant yachts with pools in them big enough to hold their yeah. smaller yacht. Yeah. It's really normal. Um, so, um, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. I'm now picking Sorry, I fucked me up there. On top of a yacht. <laughs> um, anyway, what's really cool is this hotel to try to, you know, get people to. I guess pay attention or do some advertising. They went through their entire hotel and took 360 pictures of everything from the rooms to the pool to some parties. And they posted it with uh, the very bottom of their like 3D panorama was a link to the, the hotel where you could go book a room. So I went through and just fucking checked out this hotel and looked at like a million and a half pictures of people having pool parties and going to restaurants and goddamn, those views are fucking great. So I literally ran around last night sipping wine at a fancy ass hotel that I'll never be able to afford in my life, uh, and just chilled out. It was great. I wonder at what point. I mean, you could use that to kind of scope out places you'd like to visit in real life. I like. Oh man, honestly, it would be really cool to go to. I don't know, Paris. Let's go <laughs> walk around Paris and Google VR and see if that's something that we'd be into. So I've I've done that, and actually, um, in preparation for, because um, I, I had the the vibe before I left Ohio. In preparation for moving here, I actually did a little bit of that. I did some some Washington State sightseeing around my work buildings, and then around some of the uh, apartments, and yeah, just to check out the area. And you you could use it to gauge it, the what kind of area you're you potentially can move into as well like yeah yes you know how many how many cars are up on cinder blocks in this neighborhood you know <laughs> exactly I, so it was are there was bars pretty... on the windows of the businesses okay maybe a different are there are there just bars just bars that's, in general that's a requirement <laughs> is there some place i can go after one work? bar is good other bars are bad <laughs> So yeah, uh, and recently I have been because we're we're planning on doing a vacation because you know this year of staying inside has been kind of annoying and I would like to go somewhere. Um, so I've been looking around for various vacation spots. You know, oh, I don't know. Let's go to Scotland. Let's wander around the breweries. Uh, let's let's look at uh, fucking London. Let's go to France and just mill around for a hot minute. It's been great. One of those one of those intrigues me. I think Scotland could be cool. London, Scotland. fuck that noise, man. <laughs> fuck that noise. But you're not really much of like big city person, are you? Why should anyone ever be big city person? I'm, people, I'm, why not? I am big people. city person. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean there's no I, reason other people would like it. I love big cities. Dude, like I'm New York fan. City literally had it. trash bags on the fucking streets. It's beautiful. It was it's dirty as beautiful. fuck. Yep, it's 
glorious. I, I want to see a rat as big yeah. as my leg. Yeah, when I went to Alaska, there was just a bunch of piles Bears, of moose awesome. crap. It was just a bunch of piles of moose crap on the ground. You know, never mind the giant, glorious, mountainous... <laughs> Never mind, you know, the, all the amazing parts of it. <laughs> and to be fair, I don't hate cities in general. Like, I, I, I'm not a city person, but I don't have a loathe for them. I just really did not like New York. Like, I, Times I mean, Square was I'm cool, sure there's a lot but that was about it. Yeah. And, th yeah, to, to Comrade's point, so many fucking people. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it was obnoxious. Wouldn't it be Going cool to walk around? The pandemic would probably, like, COVID in New York's probably pretty nice. <laughs> but, it would be yeah. awesome to be able to walk around New York City with literally nobody around. That Just would probably freak out. me out. <laughs> it's an apocalypse I mean, yeah. movie. I mean, in, in a weird scenario like, where you're expecting it and that's normal and you could just check it out without having to deal with anybody. I mean, it would be like like 28 days later, like the intro of that movie where he's wandering around and there's just fucking yeah. nothing. Like, that would freak me the fuck out. By the way, that is a good movie. Yeah, it is. I don't know if I've seen 28 Days. I've done 28 Weeks Later. 28 Weeks Later feels more like a... Like, 28 Days Later feels more grounded. It feels more real. Yeah. It's more grand. It's less movie-like. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. It's not really. It's not like a found footage movie, but I mean, it. You get that feeling kind of in it, in it, because it's such a small, small scale, I guess. Yeah. And I'm sure way need to re lower budget. You saying that makes me realize, like, I still need to rewatch watch Blair Witch because when that came out, I was mm. sworn off like this found footage shit is awful. Mm -hmm. And then I had a couple where I watched. I'm like, oh, this is actually and then it's really like, fucking good. And then good. Cloverfield comes out, and you're like, oh, yes. wait a minute, this is awesome. And then, um, what's the one with the superpowers? Oh, um, um hang on, it starts with Chronicle. the Chronicle. Yes, Chron I yeah. have that on Blu-ray back there on that little bookshelf. That was a great movie. I really dug that. But uh, yeah, so like, I need to revisit that. But anyway, yeah, scoping out for vacations is actually a really good thing for it. I've used it to scope out like mountains and shit. Nice, like valleys and ways to get through. But still in all, I, I don't enjoy it. I think it's okay. Like, I use it as utilization, not enjoyment, if that makes sense. I chill the fuck out. I vibe in Google Earth. <laughs> it's a tool for me. Oh, it's a tool for me, too. Tool? It's a vibe tool. <laughs> Words. Vibe tool. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah. What other games y'all been doing? Uh, what have Ooh. I been doing? Uh, Play some more Battlefield. Masters VR. Oh, what is that? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, nope, I mean, nope, that's a teaser. Oh, okay. Uh, I played some more Battlefield 4 today. That was fun. Um, yeah. Nothing really new to report. It's Battlefield 4. Battlefield 4 is still awesome. Um, it's definitely the it most cinematic. Like no, it runs great. It runs so smooth on my system. Eric, I don't know what's going on with you in that game, but it's so well, nice. let, let me rephrase it it runs great when it's running <laughs> okay that's gotta fair. Get running that's fair um but yeah it's like just it's good it's the most cinematic shooter i've ever played and then i played some PUBG of all things with tom Pubbage. josh and rob uh last night actually and i hadn't played that game in <laughs> more than a year probably maybe two years how long has the game been out? Probably like... It's been out since like 2017. Yeah. So it's probably been a couple of years since I played. And actually, it was fun. Um, it was nice to like play games with friends that I haven't really played games that much with. Like, like Tom, me and you didn't play a whole lot of games together other than the podcast until I got... Yeah. I mean, we there were the occasional game that kind of hooks the whole community and we all play, but... Like, for the most part, at least lately, a lot of the games I've been playing, are like, you know, Tarkov. We got yeah. Rob, and we have Eric, and, you know, occasionally Brian will come in or something, but that's about it. Um, but since I got VR, that's changed a lot. But, but yeah, we got to play yeah. some PUBG. Got to play with Tom and Josh. I haven't played games with Josh. I mean, yeah, just because our schedules are so, so different. He, he's always really busy, and then when he's actually not busy and playing games, it's way too late for me, and I'm already in bed for work or something or, or just exhausted. 
So it was really cool to be able to play some some Vigi games with him again. And then obviously Rob's always a blast to play with. And Rob's just a fucking killer. He is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, but, he's so dangerous. Yeah, but yesterday Tom was the killer. Tom was <laughs> carrying our PUBG games. <laughs> this is uh, this is the second time it's happened, and like I don't want to, I don't want to toot my own horn or like get super excited way too quickly, uh, but like I'm Tom's, I'm not bad at PUBG. Tom's kind of good, yeah. <laughs> like I I used to be crap, but now I'm just like not as crap. Yeah, it was cool, and it, it was nice that I know you guys play sorta regularly now. Like what? Like every weekend or something? You play a couple games. It, it seems like maybe like once or twice through the week. Yeah. Like yeah. the right the right people will be around. It's like, I want to run a game before bed. But it was nice to play with you guys because I was ready to just run around aimlessly, and since you guys actually play occasionally, you guys were playing smart and strategizing and you know putting a lot of effort into your pathing and the way you're approaching the next you know circle that's closing in and where you're uh no no i'm i'm offended by this no no what josh what? josh, josh, is josh really no. good yeah. he was he was definitely <laughs> he was definitely directing us like <laughs> but it was I, nice I to play like and pay attention to that like that was cool <laughs> I so, shoot okay. everything with, that moves, and I, with, I listen to Josh when he says, hey, go this way. Okay. And I go this way. But no, <laughs> I mean... Josh and, Tom, and uh, Rob are a perfect compliment because Josh knows the meta. He knows how to move around the map. He knows good spots to sit and stuff. And then Rob is like the combat Rob is, expert. Rob is good, yeah, like really good mechanically. He's the muscle. Well, he could tell you like, okay, here's this engagement. I'm going to go here to get this kind of view on him to force him here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not just literally aiming and clicking on the heads and, or whatever, but actual like, like he understands tactical how to combat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, it was nice because I forgot how like good PUBG is <laughs> as just a concept, like the battle royale thing with mm -hmm. the circles that close in and the whole strategy and that aspect of it. Um, I mean, as opposed it's to just shooting that things. It's a reason Apex is still carrying on, and honestly, so is PUBG. PUBG yeah. has its own thing that just none of us know about because we ignore it. True. But I had a lot of fun, even though I didn't really yeah. do anything in any of the games. I think I killed one guy, <laughs> but it was still fun. Um, more tactical than I was expecting, which was nice. We did run into some for-sure cheaters, though, unfortunately. Yeah. We we had some guy using wall hacks, and then we had some guy and using an aimbot. It was the same guy. Oh, was the same he guy? He had wall hacks because you watch the death replay, and he starts aiming at Josh before he can see Josh. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's at the bottom of like a valley, and Josh is on the other side of this big hill. So he's like walking up the hill, and before he's even within visit, like before he can even see Josh, he like snaps his aim to where josh is where you can see his name tag on the replay and then yeah. as soon as he crests the hill that his aim just absolutely snaps exactly where josh is kills josh and then afterwards when they're like celebrating because this was the the final basically moment of the game his aim snaps directly to his teammate and then snaps directly to his other teammate like it's just an auto thing I don't know if it's maybe I don't know how those work. I guess maybe once he gets his aim close enough to a person, it kind of just jumps exactly on the person and locks. Um, but yeah, it was extremely obvious, and that was unfortunate because that's a, that's a bad way to go. Yeah, you know, if you outplay me, great. You know, well played. I can't be mad about that. But to die to a cheater, it's like you're not even playing the game. Yes, yeah. like that is completely unfair. Now, according according to a lot of people, PUBG has got a big problem with cheaters. But and and granted, I don't play very often at all. But this is the first time I've seen one, yeah. and as long as I can remember. And well, the people that are good at it, you're not going to notice. You're just going to be like, yeah. "Oh, that guy's really good," or oh, he, out, "He outplayed me," not Ooh. knowing you know how he has that information, or if if he is actually good at the game, or good at shooting, or if he has some you know little help, little helping hand in there. You the old taskbar there. You know, 
you really uh, have to watch the replays too. If you, yeah. I, that takes some dedication to a situation. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I do have one thing I want to talk about the Molly play. Got to yes. talk about the Molly oh, play because I, I heard I, about this. That was so good. I didn't manage to get the clip. Okay. So <laughs> there, were, there were two people behind a rock and it was just me. I think it was just me at Ro this point. Ro Rob was downed, but he wasn't dead. Yeah. And I was watching from Rob's perspective. And so, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, uh, Josh is calling out like, all right. Uh, I think you killed one of the guys or you downed one of the guys right behind the rock. Yeah. So Tom downed one of the guys and Josh was like, Oh, th his teammates definitely rezzing him right now. And I'm watching Rob's perspective and he's downed, but he's crawling and he's crawling around the rock and he just gets into the view and you can see the guy <laughs> rezzing his teammate. And Rob's like, oh, yeah, he's definitely rezzing. And as soon as he said that, I see this Molotov explode and engulf them both in fire. <laughs> Tom, per throws, Tom threw this perfect Molotov cocktail behind the rock, caught them both on fire, and then, what, the dude ran out, and then you shot yeah. him and killed him. <laughs> They're it like, was... oh, God, I'm on fire. And I'm like, oh, now you're shot. <laughs> it was great. I was like, we were just like, oh, my God, Tom, that was the – literally the perfect play like that was exactly what needed to be done in that situation and you execute executed it flawlessly i mean that thing landed right in between those two guys perfectly within the area of effect of the, the fire it was perfect ah good old it was great i'm, I'm happy about that, such, that. It was such a good moment that was very <laughs> memorable i'm sad we didn't get a gif of it or something yeah, I, I forgot Give Your Game was running and I clicked it and I got like the last 30 ah, seconds of it. So lame. All you had to do is download the replay. Yep. Oh, PUBG has a replay system, don't, don't they? No, I didn't see a way to download that replay. Oh. Yeah. Or can you have... only watch replays immediately? Because that's, you can yeah. absolutely do replays. Yeah, you can watch like Death Cam and stuff like that, but I didn't see a way to download the replay or else I would have. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, those moments in PUBG are what keep you in PUBG. Like you'll get yeah. one of those moments like a, a week if you play it a good bit. And that's like, God, that was, that's my crack. That's yeah. it. It's like Dota. <laughs> I get a lot of moments in Dota. Like my, my witch doctor is getting pretty fucking on point anymore. I'm really digging me some witch doctor. But yeah. I Dota. could never I'm do good. I, I'm bad at positioning in Dota. So Witch Doctor is a very positioning heavy hero. I, I just cannot make him work for me. A lot of the supports I play, like I'm, I have to keep my positioning because I'm realizing I die a fuck ton. So I'm not starting in fights and I have to stay back and then just jump in and make people die. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, Heroic Saint and I ran through four ranked games He's been grinding the shit out of Bristleback recently. Nice. He is an obnoxious hero to play against, but fuck, he's fun to play with. Wow, that sounds weird. He's fun to <laughs> have as a teammate. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, not so much to say there, just it's Dota. Dota is Dota, and it, Dota's fun. I only played one game of Dota this week. I'm proud of you, Tom. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I actually I feel pretty good about that because we played the one game. It was garbage, and then I didn't. And then we went on to win the rest of our games last night. <laughs> See, so there's there's clearly a common factor. Tom was the problem. He yeah. he took all of his PUBG energy, or took all of his energy from PUBG, from yeah. Dota. That was a shit way to end that overtime. But yeah. Um. But anyway, we don't really talk about Dota. There's nothing new except for there's a new trailer out for their anime that comes out this month. Is a Dota anime coming? Yeah. Yep, to Netflix. And I haven't watched it yet, but literally one of the commentators I was reading is like, finally, there's a story that makes sense of this bullshit that's called Dota. Because no. like all of these <laughs> heroes have backstories, have names and everything. But it's just like, I mean, there's no fucking actual lore in Dota. You just line up and you fucking play, but there is actual lore behind the shit that has nothing to do with the game outside of what they say it does. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I do like that. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be shitty and make a bad argument. Valve took a look at all the problems at Dota and they said, well, okay, we've got a bad new player experience. We've got 
metas that are either constantly shifting or they're growing stale. We've got heroes that are out of balance. We have an API that could use a whole lot of love. Uh, and then, then we've got a massive issue with our matchmaking. How can we fix this? Dota anime! Well, okay, you, you didn't miss one thing. New player it's a shitty argument. It's a, new, it's a totally, totally shitty argument. New player recruitment is also an issue. And this yeah. is a good way for new player recruitment. But the bad thing is, new player experience is dog shit in Dota. Yeah, they're, so they're going to get... Fix, yeah. They're going to get a whole get bunch new of players. people. And then those people will jump into an online game and they'll get yelled at and they'll be like, wow, why did Netflix recommend I watch this great anime if the game is just toxic AF? <laughs> so they'll get yelled at, which they deserve, but they deserve to get yelled at because it's <laughs> how Val's dare, fault. How dare you play a video game without having 100 hours in offline training mode first? No, 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 no. But you shouldn't start straight in matchmaking. That's the thing with Dota. And that's what Valve yeah. needs to get out there in front and like help with that. They used to force it. They yeah, used to was, force you to play with new players. I was going to say, there's like, we we literally were playing with a person where it was their first game and they said, why is my camera so forward? And they had they had hit a key bind to zoom into their character and couldn't figure it out. They're like, I can't play this. And they literally just quit the game and abandoned it. And the rest of us had to disconnect. Like it was, it was shitty, but there's like, other than some like hints, when you have a new account in Dota, it lets you hurt yourself <laughs> badly. Yeah. And it, it doesn't look great for your, your community around your game. When a new person joins gets insta flamed by literally everyone, even before the game starts, like literally just picking heroes. If they pick wrong or incorrectly or select a bad lane or have a bad build at the start before that starting bell even rings, you're getting flamed. Yeah. Because I mean, there are some things that a new player won't know that if they do, they just fuck the game. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take Crystal Maiden mid. No, the fuck you're not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't want to get too deep on it, but yes, absolutely. Um, for regular sports, the kind of things they could do is like saying our kicker is going to play quarterback for us this game. It's that level of fuck up kind of stuff Ooh. for those who know American football. Anyway, um, Tom. What the yeah. fuck is Dunk Kite Master? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I uh, I went through the VR list on, on Steam because I wanted to buy some new VR games. And I, I did buy two, but one I haven't played, so I'm not going to talk about it. That's a teaser for next week. Um, but one of those was for 99 cents, and it's called uh, Stunt... What is it? Stunt Kite Masters VR. Um, that's a weird weird game i was reading the reviews and the thing that really sold me is this guy saying hey i have been flying stunt kites for a decade i introduced my daughter to stunt kiting with this game and she was making the exact same type of mistakes that beginners who are actually using real kites are making that's how good the physics in this game are it's it's like closer to a simulation than an arcade game and i'm like oh it's Literally just fucking kites, but in, in I didn't VR. know that stunt kiting was a thing. I know. So is there like an the, X Games for <laughs> kites? I don't know. <laughs> just flying so kites whole, down. The These whole, kites are extreme, extreme kites. <laughs> the whole reason I bought this is because one of the levels is like this chill beach, and I was listening to um, uh, what is it like? tropical electro house at the time my music tastes have just been getting weirder and weirder in quarantine you quit making up genres <laughs> i know right <laughs> so i was listening to tropical electro house and i saw the picture of the beach and the kite i'm like wow that could actually be kind of a vibe so i bought it, the game it was a dollar and yeah it, the physics are great and it feels like i'm flying a real kite i'm bad at flying kites and you know what in this game, I'm also bad at flying kites, but I'm bad in the exact same way as I'm bad in real life. So it feels just perfect. How is um, one bad at flying a kite? You're literally just holding a fucking string. <laughs> well, I mean, you you got like yeah, but if you try to move it a certain way, do, like like swoops, like I I can just sit there and hold the thing, so it's like relatively stable. This isn't but, your normal kite flying, Eric. This is stunt kites. Yeah, totally different. 
So they've got multiple types of kites, multiple uh, different like kite paint jobs. I don't, I don't know. Skins Liveries. Like, what, what do you fucking call that shit? Anyway, and uh, a bunch of game modes. Like they have kite snake, where you have to fly your kite around and it makes the tail longer as you collect the stars and you try not to run into <laughs> your own tail. And then they've got a thing where like RC planes will try to run into your kite and you have to avoid them or hit them from the back. Like a bunch of really like tiny mini game things. But honestly, it's just chill. I went into their equivalent of free play and was just listening to music, chilling on a beach, flying a kite. And that was that was fun. I got an hour's worth of worth of fun out of my dollar. That's not bad. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably go back to it. That. Like it's it's a chill as fuck game. I, I'm I'm still stuck at someone being bad at flying kites. Just that's stunt kiting, man. Oh, that yeah, I'm, stu- I'm still me, stuck dude. on freaking stunt kites. <laughs> this is made out of Kevlar. Like, there's what's... a lot to unpack in this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Can you do like kite backflips? What's going on with it? Um, you do a 900. Do you have to get a I double can. kite whenever you go to do a flip, and that's what yes. these kites are. Can you get? So, yeah, uh, uh, can you attach <laughs> missile launchers onto the kite? You cannot. Is there a like. kite combat? Is there um, laser guides? There is kite combat with the, the RC cars. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why running think... a kite into the back of an RC plane would would blow it up, but that's that's how it works. I don't know. I mean, kites rule. That's why. But it's it's kind of cool. Like they through the the little mini games, they do teach you, you know, how to control your kite. Um, it's it's kind of like playing rocket league in free play versus playing real games, right? You're going to pick up way more like movement tech and, um, you know, really just mechanics playing the actual game. than you are just fucking around in free play. And, uh, with this, like if you're trying to avoid our RC cars or RC planes, I should say, um, then, you know, you're going to have to do certain things to flip out of the way and maneuver. And you're not necessarily going to subject yourself to that kind of, fuckery in free play very true so yeah a surprising a surprising enjoyable game huh it's a dollar stunt kites i i think the price point also helps yeah because yeah it's a dollar i mean your level of what is good for a dollar is not the same as what is good as (laughs) sixty dollars no exactly there's not not the same thing at all whoops like it's not, it's not the best game in the world not not even close and like at five i would even say this is acceptable anything more than that no but for a buck why not i think that might have been on sale too i'll need to check it might have been like 10 bucks normally and then a buck on sale but hell for a dollar yeah i mean it's a buck i might pick is there multiplayer like can you and i together attack planes i don't know i didn't look into it all that much i said oh it's a dollar add to cart if I can fly a kite with you, I might <laughs> buy it. Okay. Not just a kite. Or it'll be it'll be romantic. It's a stunt kite. A stunt, stunt kite. kite. <laughs> oh, they have three environments. You can either be on the beach, day or night. Um, you can be on top of a building, day or night, which actually is kind of kind of terrifying because I'm afraid of heights. And uh, it's awful because I looked behind me and like, yeah, I'm standing on, on the very back edge of like a oh. helicopter landing pad on, <laughs> on a skyscraper. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not OK with this. And then the other one, what was the other fucking place? Like a, I forget. Clearly it wasn't something. No, nah, it was something else. I don't know. There's three different environments, three different type types. Yeah, it's a thing. Don't worry about it. Ah, anyway, Anyways, Tom, yes. you have some other Stunt games. Kites. Anything on your Anything else on your list you want to talk about? You got a few there. Uh, I played some Metroid Zero Mission, which is the the redone first Metroid for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, it's great. I've been playing that on my my Pie Boy DMG Game Boy. Hmm. That guy, Game Boy. Nice. It's, it's, it's Game cool Boy. Um, and I've also been playing through Sonic Adventure on that. Sonic Adventure is still a fucking piece of shit, but I am going to play through it. Why not? That's Sonic you need Adventure. To play 3D Nostalgic. Blast. Oh, uh, no, cuz I own 3D Blast. I've already put in my time there. I enjoy it. Like I know that it's a horribly panned game, but I really enjoyed that game. 
Uh, go back and try it now. Like isometric platforming is never a good idea. And they really, they tried their damnedest. And the tech was really cool, especially for the Genesis. But fuck, man. Oh, dude, at this, this age, anything. like that is a, that is a three days, 3D space in this age is fucking dreadful. Yeah. But at the time, it was pretty fucking good. I enjoyed okay. playing it, but I think the Sonic 3D Blast had uh, kind of fit into the same niche as a lot of other games in that era uh, fit into, which is this is a really unique experience where I can't get it anywhere else. It's not good, but I'm impressed because it's different. I liked it a lot. And then that was the same era where they fucking came out with Vector Man, which is possibly, I think, the best looking game on the Genesis. Uh, Yeah, easy. I liked Vector Man. I remember, remember that one. Love that shit. This guy's name Rumham. Vector Man was cool. Weren't we just talking about It's Always Sunny last week? Oh yeah. We I should talk about Always Sunny it. every week. I actually, I went I back mean, and watched that uh, binging with Babish episode where he makes all the food and drinks from <laughs> It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That's oh, a good like episode. Milk steak. Yeah, he makes milk steak and he makes uh, rum ham riot and juice. and riot juice. Yeah, that's a good episode. And muscle milk. Well, not muscle, muscle milk. milk. Or, what are um, they? Fight milk. Fight, fight milk. milk. Fight milk. Made by bodyguards. Four bodyguards. bodyguards. Four Four bodyguards. bodyguards. Uh, oh, I need to make some fight it. milk. <laughs> no, no, you don't. No, because oh, you don't need not? quail eggs in a fu- or actually what crow was, eggs in a. He couldn't get crow eggs, so he used quail eggs. Yeah. Either way, but yeah, we're we're off. Uh, Irk, did you play anything else? <laughs> no, no, man, I'm I'm tapped. I pretty much. All right. Yeah, what Tom, I wanted to do. Tom, is there anything you played we didn't touch on? Uh, no. I mean, I've played like a lot of tiny realms, but not enough to really talk about. Yeah. Them. Okay. Right. We're good. Let's. In that case. I guess we should move on to the news, huh? Yeah. I guess. The first one's a fun one, and yeah. it's something I honestly anticipated happening sooner than it did. Oh, um, right. Bethesda. Twenty of their games are coming to Xbox Game Pass because I think most of us forgot. Microsoft bought Bethesda. Yep. Mm-hmm. I did forget. So and now it makes even more sense. Yep. Windows so, 10 uh, but, will include it will include Space Cadet Pinball, Solitaire, Free Cell, Minesweeper, and Skyrim. <laughs> it is officially um, everywhere. But no, the games list is actually pretty. There are a lot of pretty solid games. So yeah. I think it's a it's a fine addition to Game Pass. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a great addition. So it if definitely I'm, hits. It hits the, you know what? I never played that. Exactly. That yeah. is exactly Bucket. it. These are all games that were, were good when they came out and, and received pretty well. Um, but not a lot of like brand new games. Yeah. But if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, please correct me. I don't have the list in front of my face at the moment. But I believe it's, it's definitely Skyrim. And is it Marwin and Oblivion too? I think Oblivion's on there. I don't know about Oblivion. Marwin. Oblivion, Skyrim. I know there was a couple more Elder Scrolls. I'm forgetting. Oh, let's see. Um, Prey's on there. Prey. Uh, Doom And Prey three. would be the one I'm Doom 3, in. Doom 2016. I think Doom 2, maybe. One of the early Dooms. Uh, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4. Dishonored 1 and 2. Those are really good, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, Dishonored. I've heard, I've heard the same thing. Oh no, I was kicked for being idle. That's okay. Um, yeah, Doom One, Two, Doom Sixty Four, which is pretty cool. I'm glad mm-hmm. they got that on here. Um, Doom Eternal is here. I see. Oh, I think Doom Twenty Sixteen was available previously too. Oh, okay. so TLDR is, it, is there's some good games on here. Yeah, is there Twenty Sixteen? Is that one of them? Uh, it's not in this list, but I think it was oh. added. Way earlier. When they purchased. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Fallout New Vegas is fantastic. Prey is great. Uh, Rage sucks. Don't ever play Rage. Uh, You're looking the wrong way, Tom. Oh, yeah, the Wolfenstein games. The new ones. Wolfenstein The New Order uh, is great. Um, yeah. New Blood. But yeah, there, there's good games. People need to check it out. I do plan on playing a couple of those for sure. Um, next one, a, um, something that, uh, Polar put in chat that I had seen also the, uh, Rust server data loss because of a, uh, data center catching on fucking fire. Yeah. Fire. 
fire. That, that uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. So, I mean, it sucks. I I would be upset at the situation, but at the same time, I don't think you could be mad at that. So the, here's the thing about Rust, though, because Rust gets server wipes all the time with most major updates, and there's a lot of servers that'll do weekly or monthly wipes anyway. So people are yelling at at the company for not backing up data, but if you're gonna wipe anyway, should you? I, and, and there's there's cost associated with that, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's my thing. It's like on a game like this. I don't think you back up that kind of data. No, yeah, that's like, kind of where I'm leaning. You back up like user, like we got a list of users and access and all that kind of shit. Yeah. Like, dude, the actual levels, fuck that, man. I'm not yeah. rest, wasting all that money backing up your data for that. Exactly. Sorry, you lost it. Move on. If you enjoy the yeah. game, start over. God, that sounds like an asshole statement, but I mean, I <laughs> I agree with it though, right? Like, I, would would you? Would you go through a lot of effort if you had like a multiplayer roguelike game? Would you go through an ungodly amount of effort to keep all that shit backed up within a moment's notice? And no, yeah. to me, it's a no. So, yeah, and it's it is what it is. Now, in the future, you know what I can see Russ doing mm. is allowing users to make a copy of the world whenever they sign off or something like that. Yeah, for local archiving, I could see them doing something like that potentially. Yeah, which is more of the nice. model of Minecraft and uh, Terraria, how they kind of exactly. run it. Um, let's see. Nintendo of Japan is officially ending 3DS repairs after they have run out of parts earlier than they planned. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but the 3DS is kind of an old system, so not really unforeseen. However... The big the Nintendo always says this shit, and I just laugh at it because we all know what's really going down. We're not ending the 3DS. We're just adding the Switch to the lineup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just like the DS and the Game Boy Advance. No, no, no. The DS is a, the third pillar of Nintendo's strategy. The The Game Boy Advance is really, like, that's a tentpole handheld. We're not getting rid of the Game Boy. Oh, no, we killed the Game Boy line. Fuck. <laughs> yep. So... Um, yeah no shocker yeah uh ea is investigating allegations of one of their employees selling rare fifa cards uh also in the news ea is not investigating allegations that their employees are literally writing fifa 22 over top of copies of fifa 21 now i mean yes i i don't want to get into the same game <laughs> argument but <laughs> An employee doing that kind of shit is shady as fuck. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Like, I, I mean, you want to say there's integrity because it's a random draw. Soon as that's gone, man, <laughs> you have no integrity of the game and you have fucking employees doing some back market or um backwater kind of shit, man. No, yeah. no, no. Um, So... This one I had to look into because I, oh, never mind. Um, skipped one there. Uh, Rockstar lead founder, uh, Gordon Hall died at 51. I was looking into this, he was the one responsible for, um, doing a lot of the uh, not mobile but the GTA stuff. Yeah, so he did uh, the GTAs on the PSP, so he did uh, Vice City Stories and Liberty City Stories, and yeah. also GTA Chinatown Wars, which was one of my favorite DS games. It was way 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 better than it had any right to be um you could collect and sell drugs in that gta game and there's actually like a mini like economically based mini game around selling drugs buying low <laughs> selling high and then like structuring your sales in such a way that you didn't overlap too much with what other gangs were selling in that area because they could drive the price down and lose you money and then you combine that with like doing missions and killing off certain gangs to raise the price in certain areas so you could make banks, so you could expand your empire. Like, really cool, odd shit for a Grand Theft Auto game, but really on point thematically. Uh, Definitely. It was, yeah. It was fantastic. Um, next Definitely thing, not a kid's game. Is, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> because, because the uh, buying Teaches hookers economics. and killing them to get your money back was 
to start with. It teaches economics. I, okay, side note, I'm still mad at Cyberpunk that when I spent a bunch of eddies on cyberware and then killed the guy because I found out he was a scumbag, I didn't get any money back. Uh, still mad. Still well, mad. Like GTA set the precedent. You need to follow the standard. Still yeah. mad. If you murder somebody, you should get um, all their money. Yep. Yeah. Especially if you just gave them money. Yeah. Because you know they <laughs> fucking got it. You know they it. have it. Yeah. Where's my yeah. money? Where's my money? Um, this is what I was initially talking about. Roblox. I think I'm... Ho- Roblox. 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 Roblox is uh, going IPO or doing an IPO. I guess it's a way to word that. Um, I had to look up what this part. Because um, I wasn't familiar with it. Um, and after reading about it, I understood why it is a, it's was initially kind of panned as a kids game development platform to easily make games, which is kind of a cool concept. It's like a RPG maker, only more accessible. So kind of, sort of, not really. So Roblox is a, is a game, um, with officially created content, but it also has easily like in game without external tools mod support and it's super easy to create things that can work in that world so what happened is that like among us is like the biggest hit and phasmophobia so now you have people creating uh phasmophobia and among us inside of roblox with full multiplayer support, with all the accounts and microtransaction systems already there. Like, it's a fully featured thing that allows uh, user-generated content to flourish without any kind of external tools, hand-holding, uh, or honestly, uh, strict approval systems. So you now have one game, one platform, with, uh, like, an already, like, huge fucking economy of Robux that, that you can buy and spend stuff on. Um that can now jump onto hype trends uh, with the minimum amount of effort from the content creators. It is seriously smart game design and business design. And from my understanding of reading that, uh, this was low. The content creators get 30%. Yep. Of income revenue from what they make or generate from what they make. So, uh, yeah, it, it's an interesting, interesting thing. Um, kind of interested to see how the market appraises something like this yeah it's so you know how how uh vr chat in to a lesser extent now rec room is allowing people to create content and profit off of it um they actually that page was directly not not taken not copied ripped out of uh the roblox playbook because that is how they became such a powerhouse um if you have young kids, they probably know what Roblox is, and they, you know, you can play just about any game in there. Do you want God of War, but in a kid-friendly sort of way? Yeah, there's probably a mod that does that. Yeah, and that's that's <laughs> when I started reading. I'm like, that's why I've never heard of this. Yeah, it's super super kid focused, which is fine. It's just yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, but yeah, they're going IPO. I'm really interested to see where this gets valued. Yeah, same. Um. TMNT, Shredder's Revenge, revealed trailer. I mean, I'm not a huge turtle guy. I mean, I don't hate them. I enjoyed them, but... I, Are you a turtle I guy? Am, this is a remaster of the old Turtles arcade game, and uh, oh. yeah, you bet, you bet your fucking ass I'll be on this immediately. <laughs> immediately. I love those games. Yeah, so... I, I, uh, yeah. I also really like the... To. Ninja Turtles game on, was it the NES? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, that like, one was like the brutal. straight, the straight two D. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. loved that game as a kid. That game was hard as balls. Yeah, it was. Like that was super difficult. In fact, video, uh, Angry Video Game Nerd did something on that. Oh. I have that cartridge. It is sitting on my shelf in the back room. Oh, cool. That cartridge is currently in my garage. Very nice, I'm but sorry, uh, but uh, yeah, there's actually there's notoriously one spot where there's like a one block gap, and you're up next to the ceiling, so it makes you look like you have to jump because there's a gap, and by jumping you hit the ceiling and shoot straight oh. down the hole, but in fact you can actually just run straight over the hole. 
Yep. That's some Dark Souls esque thing. <laughs> and on top of that, it was one of the earliest games to solidify in gamers' memories, formative memories, that all water levels are fucking bullshit. <laughs> The Game bomb Genie was yeah. the only way I ever got through the fucking damn level. I did it once. I did it once. For some reason, seaweed fucking electrocutes you. I oh don't know God. why. It I is, don't know how. It is the worst fucking thing. It wasn't the seaweed. Only... They were eels sticking out of the ground. Were they the eels? Only... No, I'm just, oh. just conjecture. The only water level I like in early gaming has got to be... Because fuck, fuck Echo. Echo the Dolphin is one big water level, and I hate it. I didn't um, hate the Mario water levels that much. Uh, oh, I didn't I love them, but I didn't hate them. I didn't like them. Like oh, Donkey gee, Kong. Man. Donkey Kong Country, Aquatic Ambiance, and every other water level in the Donkey Kong Country series oh. on the NES. Or Super NES. Those were all fucking great. And they have some of the best video game music of all time. Um, does uh, Chemical Zone count as a water level? I no. don't think so. That's my favorite uh, also Sonic great. soundtrack for sure. Oh, by the way, they, they have a beat saver map of that. Oh my really god! Okay, great. I'm gonna okay. have to hook you up. Yes, it's yeah. so yeah. must. Um, if I remember correctly, the map actually, yeah, we're going back to Beat Saber. You know how in the level you had like the the waves where you would like go up and down like the half loops? I want to say yeah. the Beat Saber map makes you do the half loop uh, kind of motion with your arms nice. like you're going up and down. That's cool. It is I like fucking it. ridiculous. Do they also have a Beat Saber map of the music that plays when you're underwater for too long? Probably. There is nothing that gives me more anxiety in the entire world oh than God, hearing right? that. That is a great example of music making the moment. Yeah. You know what I kind of want to do? I kind of want to go to like a public beach or a pool and just like walk up behind people and start playing that music. Like to older people who would know what that is. And just <laughs> watch how they freak out. If somebody did that to me, I'd freak out. I'd be like, oh my God, I'm drowning. You need to get out of this water right now. I'm pretty sure if somebody was having like an anxiety attack or a panic attack and then you played that, they'd probably die. <laughs> probably. Bob is a murderer. <laughs> uh, okay. Back to uh, Xbox console can stream Steam games using GeForce Now. So uh, NVIDIA, once again, I think I said it a few casts ago, their tech is going to be what fucking wins. Yep. So, so um go ahead. This is really cool. You uh Xbox Insiders, uh they're beta customers basically. I have access to the Microsoft Edge browser within the Xbox. So because GeForce Now is just just a web app, they can they can stream PC games to their Xbox. That's cool. It's fucking ridiculous. The whole console PC line is getting blurred even further. Yep. Except for Sony. That shit's still a console. Yeah. Well, you got, yeah. You got PS Now. Microsoft's like saying, fuck it. You're just either buying this or a computer. You're getting the same shit anyway. Yeah. yeah. Which is my favorite way of, of yes. approaching that situation. Exactly. Personally. It's almost like, you know, treating your consumers with, uh, with empathy and giving them what they want instead of what's just good in the short term makes business sense. Wow. If you're willing to deal with more complexities, go PC and we'll still give you the games. Yep. But yeah. Um, anyway, what else we got here? Metro 2033 is free on Steam until March 15th. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is that I've the, never played a Metro. Does it, um, is that the Redux version? Like, does that count for that? Or I is it think straight it's OG? Because the, the, Redu the only thing that Redux was was a graphical overhaul of the first one. Like it wasn't a different game. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, um, I did play Metro 2033 a long time ago, back when it was like the best visually looking game that exists. Um, so at the time it was gorgeous, but I, I remember enjoying it a lot. I never finished it. I got to a level that was really hard, and I kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. um, but I was playing on the like 
there's easy, medium, hard, and then there's oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's called something else, but it's like a hard mode that doesn't just make bullet or uh, doesn't just make the enemies more bullet spongier stuff, but like it actually changes the core gameplay a lot okay. um, to make it super hardcore, which fits the kind of atmosphere of of the game itself. Mm. But the game was cool. It has a cool atmosphere and a cool world. It was a you know, like a mixture of a triple A shooter with some horror elements. A lot of stealth. I don't know. Right. It was it was cool. I don't know how well it holds up. Like I have no idea. Well, if you would like to find out free. how well it holds up, yeah. you have until March fifteenth to grab it for free on Steam. Yeah. Very cool. And the last thing of news we already hit, but we'll say it again. Loop Heroes has sold a half million copies. A game that looks like it would run on the NES has just sold a half million copies. What a time to be alive. Yes, yes it is. Um, but yeah, that's all we got. Um, either you two have anything you'd like to add to this? Um, We're going to have new Saber. merch very Saber. soon. <laughs> let's let's, let's oh, yeah. really get down to the nitty gritty and analyze exactly how no. much okay. Beat so, Saber and Dark Souls have in common. Every Oh my fuck so you. With, <laughs> every Saturday night 9pm Eastern, Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time <laughs> we have our live podcast on Twitch, twitch.tv the 72 pin connector. However, we also then throw these podcasts up onto our YouTube, which is 72 pin connector on YouTube. So you can always go there and catch any that you miss. You can always join our Discord. A lot of good people, a lot of New games, old games, all sorts of games getting played in there. Jump in, you'll find something you enjoy. Um, a lot of really cool people. It's just a good time to go there. You don't have the link for it. That's an issue. So go to www.72pinknecker.com. Get the link for that. Get the link for the podcast. Get the link for our merch. Get the link for all of our media. Get links for everything there. And the good thing about the merch, we officially got the thumbs up on all the redesigns. And now we're just waiting for our damn merchant to put the fuckers up for us. And once we do... You guys will know. Next week, RLCS started the split. So come in, show love to the guys. Seabass, Jacob, and what the fuck are you doing, Tom? Game Boy. You're 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 killing me. But Jacob, Seabass, and uh I must said Viper, Spider. Come root the guys on. Gonna start off this split with a bang. So that's all I got, guys. Oh, I so. have one more thing. Uh, I was playing Crazy Taxi on my Game Boy oh, the other God. day. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Only good thing about that is Crazy Taxi. I love that song. Anyway, till next week, everyone. <laughs> Game on. See you, everybody.